that and started bringing in money that way. And we still, to this day, have a large construction company that ranges from Nashville to Pulaski to northern Alabama and over toward Memphis sometimes too and does uh, subdivision housing, apartment housing, and luckily, not, or not luckily, as a result of a lot of effort, we're managing to put that more and more into solar, into passive solar construction for people. Our solar greenhouse additions, our solar retrofits on their roof, or the various different kinds of things we've evolved that one. The reason we've done that is because I think we all feel that it, it's more seamless with our religious beliefs to be constructing solar and getting onto a renewable energy base than to just build tract homes that aren't faced right, have no consideration for how they're going to heat or anything else, which is what we did at first. Mm -hmm. We're some of the primary developers of solar housing in Tennessee. I think we may have the largest uh, public building that's heated by solar in Tennessee, I think, is our, our school. and. Uh, that's amazing that a, that a bunch of hippies should be the ones who are the ones who are developing that, you know? Are you still hippies? Oh, Lord, yes. Yeah. First time after we landed here that we got enough money to try to front ourselves into any other business. Besides construction, we went into publishing. And that's probably our second major industry that we have right now. We have a whole line of books that we've put out uh, Stephen has several titles that he's put out. We have a bunch of self-help books that other folks have put out. Birth Control, Midwifery. My, my books was first, and then uh, the book about the farm, and then that went good, and then, we, and then uh, the chapters in the, in the farm book, uh, which was called Hey Beatnik, we had a chapter on nutrition and a chapter on uh, baby delivering, and we immediately had to expand those into books because the demand that was, that was created by that. Then. Some, we got into CB radio, which was very convenient for us because uh, we're scattered over two and a half square miles. Mm -hmm. you know, and we really liked CB radio, and we got right on into it, and, and guys got into it with that, you know, hippie hobbyist, you know, thoroughness, and uh, we wrote a book on it. And uh, that one is our bestseller. And it's, it's just about approaching 800,000, which is, you know, Simon & Schuster would be happy to have 800,000 yeah. of anything. So all yeah. of these cottage industries are mainly to, to bring income into the farm to support, to support the community. Right, they're created for that, but we've been very careful to only go into the kinds of income producers that we think are beneficial for society in general and not just, uh, I mean, we've resisted going out and finding jobs like in the chemical companies nearby that we don't necessarily agree with their pollution standards or things like that. We want to demonstrate as the world is heading as it is, which I, I gather uh, that your worldview might be similar to mine, which is I think we're going to have a series of descending depressions for a while, mm -hmm. for, <clears throat> for a few more decades before things start leveling off. Mm -hmm. There's going to be just descending depressions going down. There's going to be like hassles because people aren't going to like the change in social positions that's going to come with these depressions. There's going to be hassles on account of it. But eventually, people are going to have to start living economically. We're not going to be allowed to be as wasteful as we've been. We've been just prodigiously wasteful. We're just, it's not going to be allowed. The, the, the ecology will not stand for it. We've reached that, the limit of that. It's not who says so anymore. You know, it's just this is it. How do you, uh, how do you define the farm? What does it mean to you in your life? I think I'd have to say freedom. Uh, a chance to uh, be the way I'd want to be if I had a choice to say how I'd like my life to go. And uh, that's everything I ever wanted to do, have a lot of close friends and a lot of family feeling and uh, a purpose to my life. I feel like I'm helping set an example to the world that you can live cooperati cooperatively and make a difference in how well it goes and show other people that you can make it that way. I feel it will always be a part of my life. It's, it is, you know best thing I can see to be doing with myself right now. I feel like I can help 
What do you hope that your children are going to get out of all of this? I hope a chance to see the world fairly as it is in a pretty open-minded atmosphere that, uh, you know, we take into account uh, all the different peoples of the world and the cultures of the world is in uh, a planetary viewpoint trying to uh, recognize all the rest of the peoples of the world as our brothers and we have uh, outreach projects in different parts of the world. I think they get to see a more international viewpoint or a more um, maybe worldwide view. I hope that they'll realize the same things that we did which made us want to come and do this. think that the, uh, the farm school uh, turns out a, a more balanced human being than might be found as an eventual product of the normal public school? Well, I think that that's what we want to do, you know, and I, I think that we definitely have a good chance of turning out real stable, sane kids, and uh, we really want our kids to understand that they may be some of the leaders of the world as it comes up, and we want them to know a lot about it, you know, but then we also let them be as free as we can, like they're really into rock and roll, and we have a lot of rock and roll bands, a lot of kids play, and they like to get up and gig and wear costumes and really get out in a lot of directions. We try to let our kids get out in many different directions to put out feelers and see what's comfortable for them and what's good potential for them. Most of the loans come through the eighth the FHA, which stands for the Federal Housing Administration. So, do they buy the house? No. no. What happens is they give you the loan. They, well, actually what they do is they guarantee the loan. You get the loan for a regular corporation, they guarantee the loan, and they give it at a lower rate. Like FHA runs around 8% right now. And the prime interest rate is about 13. That's not good. Well, it is when the prime interest rate is 13. Yeah. Right. Now, the difference is paid, the FHA pays the difference to the bank. But you still have to pay it. You still have to pay it, and it's still just like regular loans. You don't have that money. Do they give you loans? No, no, but it's long term. They give like loans for 20 and 30 years. And uh, the problem with FHA is that there are maximum levels on how much you can spend on the house. You can get the guarantee for 35 grand and 8% from FHA, and then go and get the rest of it from a regular bank to a regular rate. So you'd actually have two loans, right? For yeah. First mortgage and a second mortgage. Well, then you have to, you have to pay back years. to people, right? Right. But a lot of people do that. First Which and second mortgage. Better. You have to pay back Well, it's by far better if you don't need right. interest. That's oh, the yeah. reason. Right. And the long, see, your payments would be smaller because it's over a long term. Now, to qualify, you either have to be a veteran through the GI Bill or Somebody that comes into a category that's a minority, really low uh, wages, jazz like that. Hey, well, what happens yeah. if you die in that 30 years? 